Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of our program. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we have with us Dale Baston with Keylingo Translations. Welcome to the program, Dale. Well, I'm Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Mike. And we also have your business partner um, as well, so we will um, ask questions, and whoever would like to chime in and, and uh, respond, that is excellent. We just want to learn a little bit more about your business, so give us a little bit of uh, your background and why you started your translation company. My background is uh, mostly military. I uh, have a master's degree in economics. I uh, served in the United States Air Force for 25 years. Uh, During that time, I've been stationed overseas multiple times, uh, as well as deployments. Uh, That exposed me to a lot of other cultures, languages, and sometimes the, uh, the frustration of not being able to speak and communicate clearly because of those languages. Uh, uh, One of the most vivid ones was uh, right uh, during the first Gulf War, I was in Turkey, I was pulling uh, the uh, night shift, and uh, night shift's always a little more of a skeleton crew. We get a phone call, there's been a a mine that uh, one of our troops out in the field had hit, and uh, they had injuries and they needed help. The problem was it was a uh, group of French soldiers. They only spoke French. We didn't have a soul in there that could speak French. We were uh, scrambling and running for about an hour to be able to communicate clearly to learn exactly how serious the injuries were, what they required, and how we could get help to them and extract them. Hmm. That was very painful uh, for everybody. And we learned a lesson and fixed it on the spot that regardless of day shift, night shift, we would have people because it was a, a coalition that could communicate and speak what we needed to for languages. So that kind of brought home that issue. And then uh, I will defer to my wife to give a little bit of her background, which is very deep in languages, <laughs> and it, it just – kind of coalesce. So, Dagmar? Well, I'm actually a German national, carry German passport. Um, my mom was German, my father French. I grew up with back at home uh, and then studied several others. Uh, I earned, uh, of course, I have degrees and, and studied, um, studied in uh, Europe, but I also have... Um, a bachelor's degree in business management and a master's in human relations from uh, U.S. universities, unfinished Ph.D. One of these days, hopefully, my dissertation will find, you know, a happy end. <laughs> uh, I have worked and experience in public relations. I'm actually uh, my first profession is, as a journalist. I was responsible for um, all journalists worldwide uh, during the 2,000-year celebration, that's the oldest city of Germany in Trier, for example. Uh, also worked in export marketing, and I was the chief executive officer to CEO of, at the time, international, second largest international clearinghouse in the world. Um, it is basically a cool, and, and I say to people, I feel like I have been bottle set um, with languages. Um, mm. uh, that that besides, of course, you know, it's kind of like the nutrition, and and I think it's it's one of the reasons why I have this passion, and and according to my to my uh, business partner and husband and and a few other people, they do believe they they call me. I was gifted with languages. I, I don't want to take this on or, or argue this. I just know. Um, What's at stake? Of course, I used those uh, um, later on become also language professor, um, mainly German, English, and French. Um, and 
languages never left me that passion that, that feeling of of understanding and i may want to quote my late father uh he said there are a lot of ways to conquer somebody's or find somebody's heart but if you want to find somebody's soul you have to speak the language hmm. and i hmm. i just you know take this you know i've, I, I've used this uh, quite quite often, I, I couldn't. I up till today, I can't stand it. Uh, with the military, uh, you know, we were sometimes in some more or less exotic places, and I made sure that I at least spoke something. I cannot be in a country where I cannot communicate, um, and so for me, this is really, really, um, like like I said, something that just never left me. Uh, it's it's a continuous part. I even speak to my dogs, and my cats, sometimes in different languages, and it <laughs> seems you know they seem to know by the tone of voice. I guess. Yep. <laughs> what business is, and. Um, so with all of that, it was just a, a national a natural segue. Uh, moving with the military, keeping a job for Dogmar was very difficult. Uh, <clears throat> so. We kind of found this uh, opportunity with Key Lingo and said, why not? Uh, if we move, uh, we can move with the business. We don't have to give it up. It's something we love, and, and it keeps us interactive with uh, uh, a lot of very interesting people. We love interacting and working with people. So uh, Dogmar actually started the, uh, the business on her own, I was still on active duty at the time, and uh, she took it on and, and started. And I, after retirement from the military, came in to uh, assist and, and work with her. I, we we kind of joke that she is the face of the company. She loves languages, can talk translation, and has done that. And I I uh, will kind of be not always. More the more the background. I take care of uh, the uh, the boring business end of it. I work the uh, accounting, the invoicing, and uh, you know legal documents. I try to work more of that and let everybody use their talents wisely. Yeah, that's really smart. So, at what point did you make the decision? Um, you know, languages, that's a good uh, background for both of you, um, but you could have gone and worked for another company. What made you think, I want to start my own business? Was it because of your mobile lifestyle and you knew that you can build that and take that wherever you needed to go? I think the mobile lifestyle was the, the initial driver for this, absolutely. Uh, however, uh, after 25 years with the military and, and being on call 24-7, I uh, had a little bit of a guilt complex. Uh, my oldest daughter has uh, often commented that I was never there for key events. Uh, I didn't get to experience her 16th birthday or uh, attend a certain school activity. Um, and there's some truth to those things. Mm -hmm. I I have a, a couple of younger children that were in the house, and I did want to have the opportunity to spend time with them. If I had gone to work for a company using these skills, uh, it would still require that I have a specific commitment and mm -hmm. uh, could not necessarily always participate in some of those family things. So it was a combination of mobility, uh, love of the, the business, and the flexibility that allowed me to devote a little bit of uh, time to, to family and make up for some of that that had been missed uh, with the military. Neat. And I'm sure that you have competitors because most every single business out there has a competitor. What would separate Key Lingo Translations from other uh, language service providers? Our business model is... Uh, is unique, and that is absolutely correct. That there are uh, many other, you know, language service providers uh, of different sizes and capabilities. Uh, Keylingo has a, a centralized operation center that uh, functions to uh, to uh, vet, test, and contract with linguists worldwide 
as well as uh, be able to purchase and use some of the uh, latest technologies that are, are used in the translation field. So that gives us capabilities with some of the more larger firms out there that we are competing with. At the same time, Dogmar and I are the business owners. Uh, uh, probably should specify how that works. This is actually Keylingo is a franchise. Mm, okay. So, as business owners, we have a real strong invested interest in this succeeding. Uh, you don't have uh, hired employees that are turning over every year or so. So we can work with clients and get to know them, their businesses very carefully devote uh, uh, detailed attention to what they're doing, how we can assist. So it gives us the capability to function like a small local firm that has developed deep relationships with uh, clients for years, but give us the capability of a large firm that has, you know, branches worldwide for the number of linguists and languages we can offer, the technology to support that. Uh, this business model is, is quite unique. There's, uh, I don't know of another one besides Keylingo that has that business model. Do you, Dogmar? Not to, not to our knowledge. Um, there, as uh, you mentioned, as Dave mentioned, uh, competitors out there, uh, obviously, there's some, uh, by, by any means, there are good translation companies out there. What makes us unique also is, like they says, we still give everything to every project, which means that we are responsible from A to Z. It's not many, you know, spoil, spoil um, the meal. Uh, we rather have everything, like Dale takes something on. Of course, I know about it. But uh, it's rather that one person is taking taking care of of everything, and um, we just eliminate quite a few miscommunication, misunderstandings, misinterpretations um, right right from the from the start. Um, we really, as Dale mentioned, have not just this pool of thousands of translators worldwide. But Keylingo is also, um, we, we are a company uh, that only hires the best of translators. We only use human translations. Um, so we, we totally, totally, totally um, separate ourselves from even machine assistance. Um, and uh, people really need to have the desire the wish to, and, and often they absolutely need, uh, or in Sanders' language, they need to see the pain. <laughs> what mm -hmm. can it, a, a bad translation do to, to my company, to me? Uh, um, maybe I have to face a legal uh, um, battle, or maybe I, people will laugh about, you know, I use, I use uh, this and this, you know, instead of that and that, and... Uh, all of a sudden, you know, it's it's uh, people just just become more and more versatile, you know, and and read more and more things in in various languages. Or and it doesn't have to be to read; it could be website, click of the mouse. And so so basically, that is why you know we're not necessarily a translation company for everyone. Uh, because of that quality and those steps. We, we refer to ourselves as a business-to-business -business language service provider. That doesn't mean we would restrict ourselves, so, but that is really our target. Uh, if you have a, a letter or a manuscript that you just want to know what it says or, you know, you, you could get a assisted uh, machine translation and it's going to be good enough quality, but if you're investing uh, – a million dollars in a marketing campaign uh, targeting Europe or Asia, you need to make sure that that message that you're sending is exactly what you want. And really the only way to do that is with human translation and with the three-step process to ensure not just the translation but uh, editing and proofreading, you know that you're getting that message across. 
the big difference, and Dogmar, you could explain this more, machine is basically like word-for-word -word translation. But when you take English sentence and you translate it word-for-word -word into German, which is my wife's native language, the meaning is not the same because mm -hmm. context is different in the way they grammatically form their sentence structure, what it means, and and this word may not be a, a normal word used in that language, so you have to find another word that fits. Humans can do that and with our reasoning. A machine will get close, but it's... So again, yeah, it's how critical is it that you have a very good translation, and that's mm -hmm. what we offer at Keelingo. So the, the concept of... Um machines will take over the world or machines will take all of our jobs is incorrect because of what you just described. You have to have that human element um, in there. So that's a, a really good piece that maybe some of your competitors may even rely on, um, you know, machine translations um, a little more than you would, and that is that personal touch. What are some of the typical projects that you are doing for companies? Um, what kinds of projects would a um, business uh, need your services for? Our uh, most recent one that I, I find very interesting is, is exactly the, our ideal type of client, uh, without uh, uh, mentioning names, has uh, been functioning here in terms of uh, Internet sales pretty much solely in the North American area. They've decided that they are interested in going global. So they want their their website, which is key to their their business, their market, uh, translated, mm -hmm. and they come up with a very good plan, step by step, and uh, we are working with them. They they started in, in this. It was kind of a I love it. We didn't have to really convince them that they'd really kind of researched and thought this through. They started with localizing their U.S. English website into the other Englishes key English languages of the world, mm -hmm. K, Australia, New Zealand. And so that's what we call localization. So we go through that and go, okay, this word or this phrase is not spoken in England, even though it's used here in the U.S. So how do we adjust that so that if I'm British, I read that and it sounds British to me and it, it makes sense. Right. So that's what we did with their website to begin with. We localized the English for the other English uh, marketing targets. And after that, then they, they started, you know, different segments. I think uh, the next one was French, and then we've done Spanish and, uh, German. and German. And and they, they plan to continue. They got, like, every couple of months they do that, and then they – then they focus that into the other segments. So we love that. Well, that's exactly what we're here to help companies do, which is to, to expand their markets, target specific market clientele. If they're ready to go global and take on the uh, global uh, market, it's, it's fantastic. So that, that is one way. Uh, we, we have others that uh, simply have educational materials that they need and they use, uh, I think, more of the medical field. We've mm -hmm. had mul multiple clients in the medical field that want uh, educational materials in different languages so that they're sure that their patients are, you know, uh, taking their medications correctly, mm -hmm. that they are, after surgery, doing the proper care from home when they're, you know, dismissed from the hospital, those kind of uh, uh, translations. So that is a... a uh, document type translation but we we can work with almost any media when it comes to translation types uh, is there something that you come to mind that you would like to mention dogma it's uh, it's a wonderful wonderful mix um, actually Dale I, I was expecting you would probably mention why we would and have chosen to to take on Kilingo uh, in my case I just simply got tired of working for other people because, because 
it's uh, I just wanted to do my own thing, have my own baby, and and because I know that how I'm I'm this this typical motherly you know type of person. I take just take care. I take care of my of my clients. They become maybe not my babies, but they become friends. Uh, you form relationships, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even partnerships, and. Um, that is often not so much possible for like some of our success examples like Coca-Cola, Komatsu and, and so forth. But when you work with certain people, um, I refer that to the military language, uh, the POCs, you know, the first uh, point of contact, uh, you really can establish their, uh, really a nice business relationship and, and, um, Maybe not like Whoopi Goldberg and Jumping Jack Flash, yeah, uh, <laughs> sharing sharing there the uh, the next there's recipe. There's an old one there. Exactly, <laughs> but I do see myself as as somebody. I want to know, hey, you know, do you have a good day? Do you have a bad day? Is that always possible? Absolutely, absolutely not. But there are there are situations uh, where Dale and I really felt like. You go, you go to bed and you felt like, hey, I did a good deed. Uh, that is in the case with uh, somebody. I remember somebody. a yes. certain uh, legal uh, yes. translation client. Mm -hmm. uh, it had to do with uh, adoption and citizenship, and it was going through three different countries. And courts. China, and the U.S., and Germany. And I actually got slightly upset with my wife because she was up day and night between China and Germany and here making phone calls to talk to the lawyers they were working with to go exactly what do you need, what type of certifications will the, your courts accept versus the other. And so it wasn't just doing the, the translations of the legal documents, but <laughs> she was talking to everybody involved to ensure that we had the right translations of the right documents with the right certifications that the legal systems would accept. And that if, she put in so many hours. I was like, you know, if we were getting paid by the hour, this job would no. be pro bono. <laughs> no, and, and that's, that, uh, thank you, Dave, for, for bringing this up. Uh, another case uh, was about a deportation of an American uh, in in uh, in Europe because certain things were missing and <clears throat> had also much to do with with uh, with Italy. Italian, we have yes, we I have remember. right and we and in Italy in per se and and the way and as Dale and I were stationed there, we knew a lot and that's that's something else. Our cross cultural um, consultation and one of the examples is what what Dale just mentioned. Uh, that's all for free. We do never charge our clients for that. Mm -hmm. But as Dale just said, I, I have no idea how many hours I spend on this. But it really doesn't matter. This doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is that we have, we are kosher people. We only translate not what even the client, because in this case, this lady came, I'm not exaggerating, she said, okay, here's 70 pages. And I'm like, this impossible. You need all those 70 pages. Maybe, you know, so at the end, it was slightly over half of the pages that we translated. So you talked yourself out of business, but you it, were doing the right thing by the client. That, okay, may, maybe. But I like, to, I like to wake up, you know, in the morning and look, you know, in the mirror and just say, hello and thank you, there's another day I can do something. Yep. And we want to do something good, and that's our way of doing something something good by by really being there for people, people can rely on us, because um, there's so many so many people around, I don't want to use another another Yiddish term, I might, <laughs> you might throw me out of the interview, but um, people that just take advantage of others, and I mm -hmm. and and uh, Dale and I just don't want to be some of them. <laughs> well, I think that um, you've really done a great job explaining why you are different than other translation companies. Um, the personal touch, the relationships, treating people like family, and the thing that stood out to me was the localization because in my 
experience or my non-experience. You know, I, I don't do anything with translations, but when you first hear that term, you think, here's the words, translate it, here's your result, have a nice day. And what you're describing is you were just, in, in essence, really researching those areas to make sure of how these regions would would um, hear and read those phrases to make sure the true meaning comes through, not just this word was translated to that word. And to me, that's a really um, eye-opening uh, re- uh, revelation because a lot of businesses or brands that might think, uh, think they need translations, they might be looking at that bottom line price. Let's just compare prices. I have no clue where your prices fall. It doesn't matter because to me, you're providing value and value transcends a few dollars extra in price because you know that result is going to be very effective. So I I really like to hear that when I talk to business owners. So could you share with us what's the best way that people can uh, learn about your business if they need translations for their firm? Well, uh, obviously, we we do have a website. It's www.kilingotranslations.com. So that would sort of be a a quick way to introduce ourselves to them. But uh, I think uh, you probably determined uh, really the best way is if they would reach out and just let us schedule a, a phone call and, and we could discuss, you know, what uh, they're kind of thinking, what they look, learn a little bit about it, and then give them a chance to, to learn and, and get a feel for us. Uh, because we do believe that there's a match, and sometimes there's a, a good match, and we know that we can help this uh, company or this individual, and there are other times when it just it is not right. I mean, we may not be able to meet their budget for what they want to do. And we have, not frequently, <laughs> but there has been at least I can remember one occasion where we actually referred the individual to another company that we sort of uh, loosely partner with. Uh, it's not like uh, we, we do a lot of business, but... Uh, we realize that we have different capabilities, and we've agreed that if we get someone who doesn't fit our model and that we can assist well, but it would fit theirs, to uh, refer. And we've done that as well. I can remember one time. And it actually worked well. The other company worked with them, gave them what they need, and they were very pleased with it. So Absolutely. And uh, it's it's very easy. I mean, even when you go do visit our website, which of course you know would be wonderful, and and believe me, it's it's a little bit entertaining. So, you know, if you're getting <laughs> or can't sleep, you know, I hope definitely, it is. It was definitely, to be. definitely something to to look at. And of course, you have pretty impressive things there. Two years in a row, uh, we have been under the Inc. 500, uh, uh, the top no, 40. No, no. Don't uh, misquote. Inc. 5,000. 5,000. Wow, did I say 5,000? Wow, out of little zeros. Just forget. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> really. What's one zero between friends? Exactly. Okay, I do <laughs> apologize. Number 692 Two out of, of 5,000. So and common we're, sense. We're, we're pleased. Advisory. Yeah. Uh, we are under the top 40 North American language service providers. Wow, that's a long title. Um, 2015 and two, um, 2014 as well. But those are just titles. I want, like, like Dale said, by any means, call us. We don't mind, you know, spending some time with you and see how we can help. Sometimes we just, you know, help client or not client, and they call us, and I'm like, I really think, have you considered doing, like, maybe a voiceover? And like they said, you know, refer, and and we refer only to people where we know, like they just mentioned also, there was a loose partnership, but we knew about the quality. So we would, you know, just uh, do something like this. But again, the cross-cultural consultation is free. Everybody that comes to Kilingo Translations to us will receive a proposal in writing explaining everything to the dot, 
how much it is per word, are there repetitions, and so forth and so forth. It's all for free. Why not to take advantage? The same yeah. is um, we provide an over-the-phone interpretation. We provide uh, an 800 number. You call it or you don't call it. It's up to you because guess what? Another thing that we offer free of charge. You have this, and the only time you pay for this is when you pick up the phone, you dial, you talk to an interpreter, you hang up, and that's it. The system is only prepared to do this, and not just when you're in a waiting queue by any means. Uh, and believe me, three minutes max is your waiting time to connect to an interpreter of your choice. And the choice, believe it or not, I hope you're sitting, 240 different languages. Hmm. The system... Wow. 365 days, 24-7, at your back and call, there are no, and when I said free, I want to specify this, because, you know, you see this always free, free, free. In terms of setup, set up fee, fees, monthly no, fee, no, right. nothing, zero, zippo, nada. Pay for what you use right. only. Very good. I so hadn't even... There, there are all kinds of different that. different options. Um, we have, ex have uh, established a wonderful system here also, uh, more recently, um, I don't think Dale mentioned it uh, at the beginning, uh, the um, main focus of Keylingo is the written language, the pure translation, as, as people know the word translation. Um, but we have seen a, an absolute increase of the OPI system because people can take that 800 number, put it in their pocket, and take it with them. So you don't need any, anything else but your phone. Business people who travel a lot... But we have now also increased to interpretation because there are still certain areas where people like to see faces where it is inevitable um, to, to have this. So we also offer the interpretation services. Well, I really appreciate getting to know your business, and it just sounds so uh, much different than what the competitors would offer. And I want to repeat the uh, website address, Keylingo Translations. Dot com, and then what is the best phone number that someone could use to reach out to you to get that free consultation to see if it would be a good fit? Absolutely. Um, mainly people actually do call me, and my phone number is 719-602-9369. That's because you're the face of the business. <laughs> Well, Dale and Dagmar, thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful getting to know you. Well, well thank, thank you, you. Mike. Uh, as you can tell, we enjoy talking about our business and uh, appreciate the chance to, to share it with you today and the radio audience out there. Yes. Sounds good. Thank you so much, and, and uh, uh, a lot of luck to business. Um, what was it again? Tell us also, you know, yours, it's business. Yes, our listeners on Business Innovators Radio. So thank you so much, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.